again, the salary cap is expected to be far less than uh, Mm -hmm. normal times, normal years, non-COVID, et cetera, so on and so forth. Give me some names that might be surprise cuts just because, you know, ordinarily, of course, this player would be on the team. Um, give me, give me, give me somebody that we might hear go, oh my gosh, I can't believe that person is now a free agent with somebody yeah. like, say, J.J. Watt. Give me, yeah. give me one. I, it, it, Rich, we can go through every team, and I don't think it's that hard to come up with some of the names, and many teams, multiple teams you have to do. I, I don't want to just throw out a name. Uh, I think uh, I, I would just say this, that you are probably looking at one of the biggest, if not the biggest, buyer's market in the history of free agency. Because what you're going to see is the elite players get paid, and obviously there's going to be a lot of rookies that are going to be drafted that are on the minimum contracts. And the middle-class player, the veteran guy who gets released, I think is going to be in a tough spot Mm. because that cap is going to have to come from somewhere. And they're not going to compromise on paying a guy like Dak Prescott or Chris Godwin or the elite of the elite that come along every year that are the top dozen, 20, two dozen free agents. But that next level, I think it's a very, very tough year to be a free agent. And next year probably will be a tough year to be a free agent. But the goal would be you want to get to about 2023 and have the new TV money kick in and have the cap skyrocket up. And once that happens, it's going to be a great time to be a free agent. Oh, Not going to be a great time to be a free agent this offseason unless you are an elite talent. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.